Our lives are filled with so many amazing stories in YPO because of the people that we meet and the little seeds of our future selves that we get from each other. When we get together, and we exchange ideas, we have common experiences, and we have fun. Uh, I'd like to recognize very quickly, if you wouldn't mind, uh, two, quick, uh, two quick groups of people who have been uh, especially impactful, and I've never been able to uh, thank them publicly. Uh, the first is my forum, um, and a number of them. I see a few guys over here who flew out from Michigan to uh, be with me today. Uh, guys, uh, thank you for 17 years. It's been amazing. The experiences we've had, uh, we've learned and grown. I'm just a better guy because of you. Thank you. And uh, to my wife, Soon, my partner, and to our three beautiful daughters, Olivia, Sophia, and Ava, thank you for supporting me in this journey. As you might imagine, you spend a lot of time uh, doing this particular job, and I could not have done it if it wasn't for your support. So thank you. I'm well, that's all I can say, so thank you so much. <laughs> that's, I'm at a loss. Thank you, dear. Enough of that. <laughs> I'm not going to get through it. Um, two days ago, when we were uh, starting the Global Leadership Conference, I tried to frame the notion of how our journey as leaders matches very nicely with the renewed mission of YPO. The mission of YPO, of course, is to create better leaders through lifelong learning and idea exchange. And I frame the idea that YPO is actually fairly simple when you get down to it. It's about extraordinary leaders getting together. And it's, we're a platform of engagement, so you kind of connect and you learn and you grow and you do that stuff. But the real magic of YPO is in the middle of that. And that is that we have this safe haven of trust. We have it in our forums. We practice it at our events. And what we know and what we've studied is, is that the real leaders can't actually learn in their lives unless they feel safe, unless they're with peers. If there's anything sort of roughly hierarchical going on, they can't do the kind of deep learning that it takes to be a lifelong learner. I mean, you can trade information and you can have little life hacks, but not the deep learning that YPO really represents at the essence of its brand. And so YPO is pretty simple. I also framed that we're living in this very interesting time of tremendous challenges of, in the world. And that if, um, of the members in our 130 countries, a lot of these changes are happening at an exponential rate. Technology changes, environmental changes, political changes, all of these things are combining. And for many people in our lives, in our businesses, in our communities, in our families, they're freaked out by it. But for some of us, it's also presenting tremendous opportunity. And so I challenged everybody in the room that day that I think that there's a unique imperative for YPO. And in fact, YPO's never been more relevant today than it ever has been before. It is incredibly relevant. The type of leadership that we provide and that is created right here is special. It's magical. And we all have experienced it. But it's truly unique at this point in the world. I shared with you really quickly um, back on Monday uh, what I call sort of six key characteristics of, of the best YPO leaders that I have experienced in my 17 years in this organization. And the first was that the best YPO leaders are habitual learners. Number two is the best YPO leaders build trust networks actively and across borders and across ideologies. They have courage to do that. Number three, the best YPO leaders seek maximum impact. They know what to prioritize and what to stop doing. Number four, the best YPO leaders give compelling context. They tell people and explain, here is what this means for us. This is how we can find success. Number five, the best YPO leaders constantly build others up. That's the real foundation of success. And number six, the best YPO leaders are adaptable and help others adapt. So we're going to send these out. I know some people were asking me about this, so these, these six, so I wanted to just blast them back out to you, and we'll send them out on, their, on the social feed and everything else. So 
Take a look at them and consider them. Give me some feedback. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this. And the real bottom line for all of us as we go around in our YPO lives is just be a great member. Don't worry too much about a lot of the other things going on. If you just focus on being a good member and you use as many of those leader qualities as you can, it's like the difference of looking out at a calm lake and throwing a, a handful of sand out there and nothing happens. But if you throw a rock out there, it creates ripples and it affects the whole lake. And that's what we do in YPO. When we're great members and we focus on being great leaders, we change the world. It's that simple. So as I turn ourselves going forward, I want to look just very briefly about the future of where I think YPO is going and how it can be even more impactful in the world. I want to take one moment to look backwards. Today, we are one organization called YPO. One YPO. It didn't always used to be that way. Back for many, many years, there were two organizations, YPO and WPO. One, we used to graduate out of YPO and we joined WPO. Well, 10 years ago, the two leaders of those two organizations had the courage to be the type of leaders that we all aspire to be, which was to reach across, build, bound, reach into those uh, difficult areas of their hearts and their minds across a lot of contentious rancor even, and they built trust between them. And they shook hands on a deal to merge the two organizations together 10 years ago. And I would like to uh, ask them both, uh, Loai Nazar, who was the uh, chair international chairman of YPO at the time, and Rich Campbell, the chairman of WPO, to join me on the stage so that we can recognize them for the courage that they demonstrated back then that allows us to be one organization today. Loai, Rich, come on out. A YPO thing if we didn't have a little recognition. Thank you, my lovely wife. Here's. Oh, I can't remember which one is which. We'll figure it out later. So, gentlemen, thank you for your courage and thank you for helping make us one organization that uh, is truly changing the world. And uh, we're all very, very grateful. So, if you don't mind, can I, uh, do you mind if I get a quick picture with you? So what next for the future of YPO? A number of things that uh, we're working on to help make this organization even better for the next generation, as we are now a lifelong learning organization, is to make sure that we keep it vital and relevant for the next generation of business leaders who can join our ranks. In order for us to do that, there are just a few simple things that we need to do. Well, it sounds simple, but it's implement <laughs> implementing them will be fairly complicated. We're a platform for engagement, as I said. That's how we learn and grow. We need clearly to be more digital as an organization. We need clearly to have more opportunities for people to be able to reach out across the world and find members wherever they might be to ha that have common interests so they can build those one-to-one -one relationships like we all have in our, often in our local chapters and in our networks and in our forums. We also need to challenge ourselves as an organization to challenge how we make decisions. We need to keep our vision high. We now know who we are. We're YPO, building better leaders through lifelong learning and idea exchange. So I've been playing around with these four questions that I've been asking the board when things come up and we're trying to decide what to do. We should do we do this project or this project or that project? We have limited resources, limited time. And I, I call it sort of a four-way test. And the first one is, will it help all members learn and grow? It's a big question. Will it help all members learn and grow? Number two, does it build goodwill and friendships? Number three, 
does it reflect us at our best? And number four, will it inspire all members to engage and contribute? Now, not everything we decide or we prioritize is going to make it through that four-way test, but I think it's the importance that we need to hold ourselves up to. We only have so much time. We have so much we want to do in YPO, so let's keep that vision really high.